Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a deck playing Acromas Memorial, a 7 mana legendary artifact saying creatures we control have Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste and protection from black and from red, so some very powerful abilities, but it does come at a price of 7 mana, so this isn't the easiest card to include for most decks, but we ended up including it in a Dance of the Mans deck. So Dance of the Mans, a sorcery for X, a blue and a white, saying return up to X, target artifact and or a non-aura enchantment cards with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and if X is 6 or more, those permanents are 4-4 four, four creatures in addition to their other types. So the deck the game plan is pretty simple, try and fill the graveyard with lots of cheap artifacts and enchantments that we can then reanimate with the Dance of Demands for X equals 6 or more to turn them into creatures and win the game with. Now if X equals 7 or more, we also get the chance of reanimating Acromas Memorial from the graveyard, which will then give all our creatures haste, so we can attack with an army of 4-4 four, four artifacts and enchantments right away, and potentially win the game on the spot. So that's kind of the wombo combo that we're trying to set up, and that's trying to leverage Acromas Memorial's full potential. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we're also a Yorion Sky Nomad deck, which synergizes very well with all these artifacts and enchantments that provide an advantage when they enter the battlefield, that we can then re-trigger with Yorion once again, although we will see a change with the companion mechanic soon, so who knows whether or not this will still be worth it after those changes happen. But for now, we're a Yorion Sky Nomad deck, so we're playing 80 cards in our deck. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 2 mana we've got Birth of Miletus, which can search up an extra planes, make a wall token and gain a bit of life, and then ends up in the graveyard for Dance of Demands, so it's kind of perfect for us. We've got Search for Ascanta, which can also help fill the graveyard and eventually transforms into the Sunken Ruin, which can also help us find our various combo pieces like Dance of Demands. And then we've got Golden Egg as a cantripping artifact that draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and then we can also sacrifice it at any point to add one man of any color, so the turn we want to reanimate stuff with Dance of Demands, we can just sacrifice it, and it's not going to cost us any mana to do so, and then we can still get it back with Dance of Demands, and of course great with Yorion as well, and same goes for Guild Globe, which is very similar. And then we also have Mindstone, which we can also use to ramp and can also be sacrificed to draw cards. And then that can also maybe get returned by a Dance of Demands. At 3 mana we've got Emery, Lurker of the Loch, which can also return a bunch of artifacts from the graveyard. So it has a ton of synergy in the deck. And then we also have the Fairy Time Raveler to give us some cheaper interaction besides our sweeper effects. Good with Yorion, very good with Elspeth Conqueror's death as well. Then at 4 mana we've got our Sweeper with Shatter the Sky. We've got two copies of Kazmina, which is also decent at uh, discarding Acromus Memorial if we happen to draw it, and help us put more artifacts and enchantments in the graveyard for Dance of Demands. And of course Planeswalkers in general are nice to reset with Yurion Sky Nomad. At 5 mana we've got Elspeth Conqueror's Death as another nice piece of interaction that can return our Planeswalkers from the graveyard or an Emery. And then we've got two copies of Time Wipe as an additional sweeper to complement Shatter the Sky. Also very good with Yorion Sky Nomad as we can maybe pick him back up and then re-trigger all those Enter the Battlefield effects. And then four copies of Dance of Demands as our main win condition. Two copies of Ugin the Ineffable, which is also a nice Planeswalker to synergize with our Elspeth Conqueror's Death. Gives us a bit of removal with a minus three. And the mana discount on artifacts is actually quite relevant, since we can play Golden Eggs, Guild Globes and Mind Stones for free. And our Acromus Memorial only costs five mana with an Ugin in play. And then we've got our two copies of Acromus Memorial, which we don't really want to cast for 7 mana, but if we can cast it for 5 mana with an Ugin, it's more reasonable, but for the most part we want to get it back from the graveyard using Dance of Demands for X equals 7 or more. And then taking a look at the mana base, we're maybe not playing as many lands as you're used to seeing in a Yorion deck, but that is also because we have so many cheap cantrips that will help us draw more cards. We've got two copies of Castle Ardenvale as another mana sink. Eight planes need plenty of planes to search up with birth. We've got uh, two copies of Castle Ventress as well for a bit of scry, six islands for Glacial Fortress, for Hallowed Fountain, four Temple of Enlightenment, and then four Field of Ruin, which gives us a bit of interaction against opposing copies of Field of the Dead, which can be tough to deal with otherwise. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Geruda deck. 
So finding our sweeper is going to be very important. I've got a reasonable hand for now. Now the Geruda decks in Historic might also be playing Ulamog, which is indestructible. So that's a card that wouldn't die to my Shatter the Sky or uh, my uh, Time Wipe. But I can potentially bounce it with Teferi. So probably going to see a Growth Spiral from our opponents. Four mana for Migration Path, so next turn Geruda is coming. I guess I'll play Teferi and just plus for now, and then... If our opponent hits a copy of Ulamog, we can just bounce it and draw a card next turn. And yep, there's Ulamog. At least it doesn't have any ETB effects when reanimated, so it's not too bad. All their opponent is already at 6 mana, so they're not too far from just hard casting it. We have drawn a lot of lands, so hopefully we can uh, find a sweeper soon. Sasa to re-trigger Geruda, and a Charming Prince as well. So we're gonna get a lot more Geruda triggers. Hits and Andres Forerunners. On the bright side, my opponent's filling my graveyard for my uh, Dance of Demands. And Geruda gets exiled once again. Alright, there's my Time Wipe, and I can even cast it at instant speed thanks to Teferi. Trust me, I have a plan. Now, do I still activate Kazmina. I don't think I do. Just pass a turn. Now if my opponent hits another Ulamog, I won't be able to destroy it with a Time Wipe. They hit a Spark Double instead. I guess we'll let them uh, keep going for now. All right, and that's a miss. All right, so we'll let them untap. Put moves to combat. Let's see if they play around Settle Wreckage. No fear. All right. Thassa is removed from combat. And our opponent concedes, not even gonna try and hard cast Ulamog. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. With uh, fine opening hands. Facing turn one elf. Don't think we need more. Random trinkets, just need some land drops and maybe some sweepers. Next turn I can go Mindstone into a Golden Egg or a Skanta. Start filling the graveyard for Dance of Demands. 
This could be Nyssa, which we can conquer death. Mirarius Wake instead. Alright. Another fine target for the saga here. So no Ulamog for our opponents. Nissau shakes the world, so probably gonna cast our Yurion to blink Conqueror's Death. Our opponent's deck list looks pretty familiar. Would have loved to put Memorial in the graveyard with Ascanta instead. Uh, let's uh, play Temple. Dance I will keep. Back up Nissa. I think I gotta keep this to end the game. I guess if I cast Shatter the Sky and they don't have another lands, they might be unable to cast an Ulamog. So let's attack Nissa. And then Shatter. We also get to draw cards, so that's kind of nice. Back up Shatter. Alright. So, Dance of the Mance is looking good. I've got a Guild Globe and Birth in the graveyards. Golden Egg in hand and in play. Opponent's just gonna cycle a couple migration paths, so they're not trying to ramp anymore. So they must not have a payoff in hand then. The land fights for us. And put that in the graveyards. And yeah, opponent packs it in. We were gonna get back our Yurion next turn with Conqueror's Death, which was gonna flicker the Golden Egg as well, which was gonna draw some extra cards. And then this turn we could have maybe cast Memorial, and then on the following turn play Dance of Demands, getting back a bunch of hasty flying 4-4 four -four creatures to end the game with. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, unexciting but keepable hands. We've got Kazmina, so if we draw the memorial, we can discard it to set up our dance. Facing turn one Healer's Hawk, so against the life gain deck, having any sort of sweeper is going to be pretty important. Uh, I guess we'll play Mindstone, so we can ramp into Kazmina or the Time Wipe. Although sometimes it's better to play Mindstone on turn three, so we can double spell it alongside another two drop. Dawn of Hope. Alright, that diversifies against a potential sweeper a bit better. So we'll just play Cosmina for now. Opponent does draw cards, so they're not extending too much into my time wipe. 
But that's fine, we can play a longer game. That's where this deck is pretty comfortable. So I could play Yorion to flicker Kazmina, which also stops the Healer's Hawks, and then Time Wipe can pick Yorion back up. That seems fine. And then just not activate Kazmina this turn. Soul Warden makes an appearance. And Linden, alright. So the time wipe's looking pretty good here. Send an Yorion. I'll put one of these trinkets in the graveyards. Wanna keep hitting my land drops and then having them in the graveyard for dance is fine. Although keeping them would also be nice with Urium. Yeah, let's keep playing trinkets. Alright, probably don't need all three shatters. Join my cause. And we'll pass a turn. Might see a token being made here. We're slowly filling the graveyards for dance. These I can sacrifice at any point. Probably gonna play Yorion next turn, flickering my Guild Globes and Golden Eggs, and resetting Cosmina. And then Conqueror's Death is a nice answer to Heliod, which is otherwise pretty tough for us to deal with. So we'll play Yorion. I guess I can play Mindstone first. Then I have the option of sacrificing a Mind Stone if I want to, to get it in the graveyard. I think we've got enough mana as is, so I don't mind. And then hoping to eventually draw into a memorial that we can discard with Cosmina. No targets for Conqueror's Death just yet. So what do we have in the graveyards? Mindstone and Globe. Could do a small dance of demands here, since we have a backup anyway. Yeah, I guess I don't mind. So we'll add one. Can do it for X equals four. And 
then discard two hand size. What else do I discard? Maybe a Conqueror's Death. That way I have an extra target for my Dance of Demands number two. Opponent is making sure to draw as many cards as possible with the Dawn of Hope so they can recover from another potential sweeper. Start with Cosmina. My students are loyal geniuses. Emery, fine to draw. Hoping to mill Memorial. Guess I'll sack another Mindstone. Alright, and then we'll pass. Keep Yurion on defense. No need to shatter the sky quite yet. Not really under any pressure. Can now use Emery as another card draw engine. And then try and set up the one hit KO with uh, Dance of Demands. Gideon Blackblade, all right. Finally found a target for Conqueror's Death. So what does Emery get back? Golden Egg? Maybe Scry first with Castle. Does it leave enough mana for Conqueror's Death? Five. Uh, I think I'll be short, so let's not do that. And I could play another Emery here, just to fill the graveyard some more. Don't mind it. I am not quite indestructible. Still no memorial. Can maybe upkeep a scry with castle as well. A Johnny. Might also just end up casting Dance for a whole bunch. Which can also get back a Conqueror's Death to exile a Jani. So I think, let's see. Yeah, let's just take my draw step. More Emery's. Alright, let's cast another Emery in case we hit Memorial. No Memorials. How many dances do I have left in the deck? That's all of them. So I do have to be a little bit conservative with uh, this last Dance of Demands. 
So do I want to use it now? I probably want to wipe the board first. Yeah, let's wait another turn. This turn I can try and attack a Jani pot and probably chumps with a Hawk. And then we'll shatter after using Emery. Maybe this attack is kind of unnecessary since we just make him gain one life. Alright, let's activate Emery, getting back Mindstone, sure. Shatter. And then Conqueror's Death can also get back Uriel next turn. bunch of Duxos triggers. Now I do have to be careful here because my opponent is at 35, which means that uh, if they have the other Ajani, they can exile all my artifacts. But I guess in response I can just sacrifice them. So let's play another Mindstone. And pass a turn. So that one life I made them gain by attacking with Yorion could cost me if they have the other four mana Ajani. It's gonna be Pride Mate instead. And yeah, Strength of the Pride, there he is. Gonna use a zero ability, so now I'm forced to sack a whole bunch of stuff. So I won't get my Yorion value. Alright. At least Oskanta is gonna help me find Memorial pretty quickly. And then we'll get back to Fairy, I guess. Or I can flicker Kazmina with Yorion. Now let's go with uh, the Fairy. Maybe Scry first. Alright, there's my memorial at long last. So it's happening next turn. With the fairy I could also dance at instant speed, but we want to be attacking with our hasty artifacts. Soul Warden. Alright, opponent's nice and empty handed. I guess they can draw a card with Dawn of Hope. You can still fight. Or a couple cards with Dawn of Hope. But I don't expect Settle the Wreckage to be in their deck. I can cast Dance for 10 next turn. Do I have 10 artifacts slash enchantments? I think I do. Now our opponent will gain a lot of life from the Soul Warden, so I might not be able to kill them in one attack. But, uh... Should still be a pretty good turn. So QQ to float all our mana. 12, so X equals 10. And we'll get back at least one Conqueror's Death. I guess we'll make it two. How many cards do I have left in library? 27, so not too afraid of decking. And don't need birth. 
So we'll just get those and a couple mind stones. Get rid of a Johnny. It's gonna be a big Ajani sprite mates. Now luckily all my artifacts are colorless and also it can give protection from colorless. Otherwise the Pride Mate could maybe sneak in a lethal attack next turn. I guess another 4 mana Jani could kill me, exiling all my artifacts. Although a Conqueror's Death is an enchantment, so that will still be there, but then they can give protection from white with Altsaid. So it's actually kind of complicated here. here goes nothing. See, so I need them not to have another Jani, otherwise I could die. Discard some lands. Opponent's got 30 mana, so they can potentially draw some more with Dawnfope. Vanguards. Although I guess they are not at 35 life currently, so they would need to get up to 35 first and then they can exile my stuff. So surprisingly interesting game here. Donophobe definitely kept her opponent in the game. Another Soul Warden. So it doesn't look like they're going to get up to 35 this turn. So we should be safe. And Janice, welcome. And Conclave Tribunal. Alright, that's fine. Gets rid of my memorial. Can just play another Conqueror's Death to unlock it. Although I guess they have Alsate up, so they can protect from it. I guess Ugin's colorless, so they won't be able to protect from that. Alright, let's attack GG's. Very cool game. On to the next one. Uh, lands are a little awkward, but I think we keep... More lands that come into play tapped. And 
And next turn I can go stone into emery. Find target for Teferi. There's our dance. All right, so we're already in a pretty decent spot to cast a big dance. You just let me know if you're up for round two. Do I want a Yorion? Can go Gilgalop into Yorion. Ooh, there's my memorial. Perfect. Three, four, five, six. I need one more mana to dance for seven. So close. Sure. So how bad is Grey Merchant next turn? It's not lethal, so... That all happens. Can get back Mindstone. I might be better off keeping Mindstone in the graveyard. So we'll start here. Alright, so next turn I should be able to combo off. Did I have the chance to discard birth? I think I did. So maybe I should have just put an extra target in the graveyard here. So I'll be able to get back the three eggs, Mindstone, Memorial, and another birth. That should be enough. Although, maybe not if they Grey Merchant here. Although this protection from black, so it's pretty good against Mono Black. Pretty happy that they didn't Grey Merchant me. So they should be dead now, unless they have drill bits. I will return with even more disciples. Oh yes. Everything has hastes. 
flying protection from black and from red. All right, we did it. All right, we're on the play. And uh, yeah, we've got a fine hand. Mine stone into a couple emeries, try and fill the graveyard. I'll keep birth. Also gives an artifact for emery, so it's not uh, too bad here. Opponent on some sort of reanimator deck, maybe, or zombies. Next turn I'll get an artifact wall and I'll play Mindstone so I can play one mana Emery. Murder Sider at Emery. Don't mind seeing that when we have a backup. Take two. I could shatter the sky right now, and then I guess it's gonna be a two mana Emery, which I wouldn't be able to play. But it seems to make more sense. Or I can just play Emery and not care about swiping the board until they play something more valuable. Sure. Could also decide to sacrifice Mindstone. Right now I have Golden Egg that I can return. Take two. Yeah, let's sag the Mind Stone. Time Wipe could be nice. And there's Dance. Don't need to Time Wipe right now. Let's just get some value from Emery. Get back Golden Egg, which is nice to flicker with Yorion. Falmar Knight Adventures. Alright, so we don't have a ton going on, but next turn we can Yurion, Flicker, Emery, and Golden Egg perhaps. And then pick it back up with the Time Wipe. Arcane Adaptation, alright. Naming Zombie. So this might be the Liliana Infinite Combo deck where they try and play a zero mana creature over and over with Liliana. Thanks to Arcane Adaptation and Drain us out that way. And the Corpse Knight, right? So they have all the combo pieces in play. They're just missing Liliana and then some sort of creature they can keep looping back. All right, so might be forced to wipe the board here. All right, I see. So they've got Bastion of Remembrance as another Corpse Knight alternative, Soul Diviner. Can uh, be another card draw engine. So, don't know exactly what the opponent's trying to do, but I think it involves 
Yeah, Liliana untouched by death. So, thanks to Arcane Adaptation, every card in Nippon's deck is a zombie, so they can get access to everything with Liliana. And, uh... Don't see infinite damage yet, but they can definitely do a lot of damage with Corpse Knight and those Falmer Knights. And then Stitcher Supplier to fill the graveyard, and then if they find a zero mana creature, they can play it, it dies, triggers Corpse Knights, and then they can keep replaying it thanks to Liliana. And we die. So is there anything I can do to stop that? I can get back Elspeth Conqueror's death with my uh, Dance of Demands. So I should probably try and do that. I have 8 mana total, so... Yeah, do it for 6. Turn them into creatures while we're at it. I guess I should sag this first. Stitcher Supplier. And yeah, there it is. Stonequill Serpent and Chamber Sentry. So they would have killed me if we hadn't dealt with Liliana. So pretty sweet combo from our opponent. So what do we want to do this turn? Can Conqueror's Death get rid of Adaptation to prevent uh, Liliana top deck from killing me? Seems pretty safe. And then uh, play Emery maybe. And our opponent concedes after losing a few too many combo pieces, but a very cool deck idea from our opponent. So overall our Yorion deck did quite well, although hard to say how much of that was just Yorion and some of the staple blue-white cards being good versus the Dance of Demands part of the deck actually being good. But we had some pretty good value Dance of Demands and then Dance of Demands to actually close out the game as well. A few times we managed to combo it with Memorial, so overall the deck's pretty fun to try. So maybe try it while the companions work the way they do, because they might change next week and who knows what they'll look like afterwards. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.